we probably need to talk about coffee. Let's do it. So this is, like I said, the celebrity death match of coffee machines. <laughs> Koi Rig, the dominant brand in the U.S. for sure. Absolutely. The espresso, the dominant brand in Europe. I mean, this is probably like the fourth or fifth one of these I've had. Now, hold on a second. I want to, I want to ask you a question because right. you say Keurig. I don't even, I can't even say the what you, I say, I say Keurig. Okay, that's you probably say, right. No, I, I think maybe probably you're right. I, I'm not really sure. I'd love to hear some feedback from you all on the actual proper way to pronounce this thing. I say Keurig, you say Care, care. I, you say tomato. I say tomato. I don't. I don't really know. Send us um, an email and tell us how to pronounce this. I'm pretty sure it's cure. Well, if that was a German word, is it? Is it? It's well, not I'm a sure German. Originally, First it was all, probably a German. No, well, well, let's talk about where cure came from. Well, I don't know where the fuck did it come from. Green Mountain Coffee. Green Mountain Coffee. You know what Green Mountain Coffee is? It's a bunch of bastards. It's convenience store coffee. That's where they got their start. Well, I don't know if that's where they got the start, but that's where you'll find Green Mountain Coffee. Walk into a convenience store, get a cup of coffee. Most of the time, it's going to be Green Mountain Coffee. And if you think about convenience store coffee, not exactly the greatest coffee in the world. And yet, this is what everybody has in their homes in the U.S. Well, yeah. I personally don't understand why people have it. Um, well, because I've been an espresso sort of person for a while. But we are going to do try to do a fair, unbiased taste test here a little bit later after we talk about some of the features that each have. But So I think one thing to talk about is this. In most countries in Europe... Not necessarily England, but the majority of countries in Europe, if you say, I want a coffee, you will get a shot of espresso. If you want what Americans consider a cup of coffee, that would be, in most places, a cafe Americano, which is literally just a shot of espresso with some hot water in there to make it take up more volume. Basically, it's a watered-down coffee. It's a watered-down espresso, right? So, you know, it is what it is, right? Americans brew coffee by the pot. Europeans literally do it by the shot, right? I think it's probably by the pot, by the shot. That's basically the difference. So... You know, when I think about the fact that Americans drink coffee by the pot, and, you know, I I grew up drinking it that way too, you know, this is certainly not cheaper than just brewing a pot of coffee. No, but it's a lot more convenient. That's the only thing. It's the convenience of getting, it takes me two seconds, I don't have to get up early, you know, fill everything up. I remember my grandparents would actually, like, at night before they go to bed, get the coffee machine ready. So when they woke up, they just hit the button. Right, and it would be a, while they were in the shower. Or there'd be like a time. My mom had one had a timer, right? And every oh, morning right. at six thirty, it would just sort of start. Coffee and, machines with timers. Yeah, that was cool because it's like it could wake you up. You could smell it. Yeah, you would smell the, the fresh cup of Folgers yeah. in your. Neither one of these will do that. I think for sure is the point. I don't know if they will or not. I haven't really done that much. But here, but here's what here's what gets me right. I'm shocked at the number of people I encounter who don't understand when they're going to Starbucks what they're getting. So a lot of people go to Starbucks and get a latte or get a cappuccino. I think they think that it's the same thing as what they drink at home, just that Starbucks somehow makes it magic and Starbucks is better. What they don't, what I think... They're just they, getting a European cup of coffee? I think, yeah. Like, surprise. I mean, it seems like obvious to you and me and probably like 80% well, of Well, no, I mean, it wasn't obvious to me until until I just bought an espresso. You know, I had the Keurig and I, mean, I was like every other American. Not Now, if you get a black coffee, okay, there's different. But if you go to Starbucks and you get a latte or cappuccino or, you know, whatever, macchiato, which what they serve is not really a macchiato, but re- regardless, you get it. What you're getting is a certain number of shots of espresso, one, two, or maybe three, and a bunch of freaking milk. That's either, you know, foamed or steamed, but it's hot milk and a couple of shots of espresso. That's what makes it that big it's not that it's that much coffee and milk and starbucks just does some magic <clears throat> that it's, makes it better it's just less watered down well it's just a different fucking drink all the way around yeah and so if you like starbucks coffee there's no don't, don't even if you're trying to recreate starbucks at home you're going to get much closer with an espresso machine absolutely if you're the person who i like my pot of coffee or i like to go to the diner and just get the bottom then you know odds are this is probably more what you're used to right i think I still think what comes out of this machine is better, but well, we get to that, and, and do you know that the the new Keurigs are going to actually brew an entire pot, the Keurig 2.0 as they call it, which is going to contain DRM, digital rights management, similar to things like MP3s that you've downloaded before that can only be put on a certain number of devices. So they're trying Keurig uh, had a had a patent on these K cups as they call them that you stick in there, and the patent ran out in 2012. And ever since then, everybody and their brother, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, Panera apparently, produces now K-Cups for less expensive, typically, than Keurig does because they don't have to pay them a licensing right. fee so, anymore. So that's, so that's one thing. If we start to talk about these products, Nespresso for a long time, literally until last week, it was, you could only buy from Nespresso. Right. In their capsules, you can see, 
Much smaller. Or much smaller. But again, you need less coffee to make a shot of espresso than you do to make a big, full American kind of giant cup. But, dude, those, those cups... They're half empty. Yeah, they're half empty anyway, so I'm not even sure there is more coffee in there. there. There's, there's, there's a little bit more, but, but regardless, the point was Nespresso, you could only buy from Nespresso. Now, that being said, Nespresso had literally dozens of various varieties, decafs, strong, less... So you had a lot of options, however... But, but still okay. mainly coffee, right? I mean, one, one thing I think people do really like about the K-Cups is they can get coffee, they can get tea, they can get hot apple cider, they can get hot chocolate, they can get all sorts of different things, and I think that actually plays a pretty big role into, well, I think into the... the soup the or something out of it now? I've heard, really? I've, I've I haven't seen some, the soup. Somebody's trying to, like, use it to make soup. Uh, that, so doesn't, like, oh, that doesn't sound well, good. Well, you know, whatever. The more people can do with it, the better. It's the new cro- the crock pot of the uh, 21st century, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Or maybe just crock. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't... Now, but, the other thing to mention is that uh, the Keurig is a lot less expensive in general than but is the it, Nespresso. It's you also know? a lot bigger, as you can see here. Right. And, um, but the, but the Keurig started as low as about seventy bucks for the for the single. This one runs about one fifty. Whereas these Nespresso's two to three hundred dollars easily. Now now the, the Nespresso model that we have here actually comes with a milk frother, right? Built in, which is cool because it's compact. The buying a milk frother though by itself is only it's a relatively I don't know, like a forty dollar type and twenty five forty dollar investment. Yeah, well, and when you buy it with an Nespresso, it ends up costing you a hundred dollars more. I don't think it's that much. It's, it? it is. It was two. It's two hundred dollars. Or on Amazon, uh, a couple of months ago, it was two hundred dollars without the mi- the milk frother. Mm-hmm. It was three hundred with the milk frother. But I definitely like the built in. I, it I like works. the milk. It, it looks built good in as well. Definitely, I think aesthetically, this is better. There are some it's smaller cures. Way as well. smaller. But I will say this. So one thing, and we're actually the coffee we're about to test here. Both companies now, or not both companies, but for both both of these, this is one brand that makes. You can make your own capsule. So, for example, you can say, well, you know, I want to go buy, I like Star. If you're a Starbucks person, you can go buy a Starbucks espresso or, you know, a regular coffee if you had a Keurig, Keurig, whatever we're calling these things. And it's an empty little capsule about the same size. Well, you know, obviously it has to be the same size to fit in the machine that you can actually fill with the coffee of your choice. So what you see here, Illy, which is one of the, you know, sort of leading your uh, Italian espresso companies, so it's delicious. So we've kind of tried them all, and it makes me love my Nespresso machine even more than before because I like that Illy coffee and the Starbucks coffee way better than what Nespresso was. Well, not only that, but it's, it's a lot cheaper. less expensive to do it that yeah. way, right? It ends up costing about a dollar per pod when you do it with an Nespresso. So right. is more like 40 to 50 cents uh, each about, about, yeah, about when, you, when cents. you you know make it yourself. And you're getting what I think is a better coffee. So it's, it's, way it's, better, a double, yeah. it's a double benefit. Now, one thing that... The, this Keurig has, the lower end Keurigs do not have an espresso option. They just have sort of regular sized coffee and giant coffee, right. like Americans like. Which was the one that, you know, and I had, before I got an espresso, I had the, the Keurig and it actually ended up breaking on me. And I could, I, you know what? I never liked it because I always felt like what you, exactly what you're saying, that I was just getting this watered down, bland coffee. And so I haven't used the one with the, with the short cup. I don't know if it's technically an espresso or not. It's definitely, though, a shorter cup and less water. So uh, we're going to, are we going to test them yeah, out? So or what we're are we going to do? Test them out. One thing I'll say is, you know, when you look, when you put in the Keurig, you have to take it out after every one. The Nespresso actually, after you use it, it dispenses the old one that flips out in into this bottom thing. Did I just screw something up? No, you're fine. I wasn't sure if there was one in there that needed to be used. No, you're fine. Uh, you're good oh, okay. One fell. Okay. But you can actually see, right? So here's where the old ones go. And so, you know, depending on how often you use it, every few days or every week, you throw out the old thing. So I think that's an, a, a, one thing that's cool about the Nespresso. They both have detachable water tanks. Again, I rarely actually detach them. I usually just get like a cup and pour them, pour them into the detachable, into the reservoirs myself. But there's different ways to do it. I will say this: we talked about this Keurig has three sizes: an espresso, quote unquote, size, and the two larger sizes. Some only have two. Pretty much all espressos that I'm aware have a regular espresso and a lungo, a long, a longer coffee, which I would say still is not as large as a standard cup of American. Joe, but it's um you know if you if you are a person who says well I don't want two shots of espresso and a lot of milk I still want a primarily coffee based drink you can do a lungo. Do you ever use the lungo? 
in the beginning when we first got it, I did, but now I just pretty much drink espresso. I haven't used it yet, and I'm I because I don't know what I'm gonna get. So I, maybe I should try. Here's, it. here's what we're gonna do. Now we did mention the disposable capsules that are available both for uh, Keurig and Nespresso. That is what we're gonna use for the Nespresso machine, and we're gonna use Itty uh, Espresso. Now we have a reusable cooler right. capsule. So this is you know again, it's something where you can put your own coffee into a Keurig, but this is a reusable one, so you have to clean it yeah. every time. Pick your poison if you like that. We've, you know, some reviews I know when we read say that these things eventually break down over time. And I gotta say, when I did have a Keurig, you know, I had this, I didn't use it ever because I felt like it took away the convenience factor for me having to refill and clean this right. thing all the time. I just didn't buy yeah, this. If you got people cups, over, you, know? you got, yeah, if you got people over and you have to dispose, clean this every it's time a, you wanna use it, it's a pain in the ass. ass. So, regardless, we're going to use Illy Coffee, the exact same amount of Illy Espresso in both the Nespresso yeah. machine and, uh, and the Keurig. We're going to try to do a little bit of an apples to apples comparison so, and sort of see, give you guys our feedback on what we think about, you know, the difference between the two. Now, we've never tried this, so we don't really know what the yeah. result is going to be. And the other thing that we're going to do is that we're going to actually uh, also show you here exactly you know how much noise they make exactly so which one are we going to do first we're going to do the nespresso whichever one you guys want to do okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to do the nespresso now and while that's happening dasha is going to fill the uh espresso grinds don't worry about the milk for now it's filled the espresso grind espresso grinds into this reusable cure cup so it's going to be a little bit of noise but we're going to we want to just sort of do it in order to show you exactly how is much noise it makes there? yep you're ready to go all right so i'm going to press the small button one time and that's going to begin the process. Apologies for the noise. Check out the decibel meter. Go ahead. So it's not, you know, particularly loud. You hear it a little bit, um, but not really much louder than us talking, I don't think. Well, you know, one issue with you talking is that it throws off the decibel meter. But, you know, we're at about 80 dB. It smells really good. So we're, we were around 80 dB before before you started talking. So let's let's say 80 there, and then let's now let's uh, let's test out the Keurig. Okay, we need to. So I'm making Are you ready? sure I'm yeah. pressing yeah. the pressing the And we're gonna we're gonna do the short cup, here. the shortest cup possible, okay. and stay over there. Waiting for it to warm up. Waiting, waiting. Wow, wow, that one's quiet. Yeah. So the Keurig that you used to have was. Maybe I should stop talking. Well, I don't think it matters. It's clear which one was a lot less. Well, not according to the decibel meter. It's not that much clear. Will I need to get it on the glass here? So, all right. So, noise. actually, the, the Keurig in, with this particular model, model. ended up being a little bit quieter. Now, I had one that was much louder than that, and I guess this one's a little bit fancier and, and is a lot but quieter. That, that's, that's a big surprise to me. This is, in my hand, the short cup from the Keurig. In this is an Witty's hand, espresso. we've got an espresso shot. Yeah, so that's you know pretty ridiculous. This is not even... I it's was a big excited difference. when I saw this model of Keurig, because I've never seen a Keurig with a quote-unquote espresso size before. And... That's a full cup of coffee. That's not a yeah. That's well. It's smaller than the regular. I mean, you need. I guess. Like that. I mean, that's pretty unbelievable. But I mean, I guess that just goes to show you again the difference between a European style coffee and an American style coffee. Right. Is that you know this only leaves me a little room for milk, whereas I got plenty. I got plenty of room for milk and stuff there. Yeah. Well, here's what well, I can't really. What I really struggle to you know as as we talked about earlier, a lot of Americans don't know what a Starbucks coffee is. When they think, oh, I like the latte, I like an espresso, or sorry, a cappuccino. The thing is, it's so popular, I can't imagine who actually wants to drink that. Well, here's one thing, too, is one big difference. This does make a hotter cup of coffee than this does. Like right now, okay, I, so, yeah, I so, can't even, dr I'm not even sure I can drink this right now. So we're going to talk about that. I'm giving it a second. I haven't, I haven't tasted it. Well, one it of yet. the reasons, you, get, you know, what are you going to do is you can use milk. So, Dasha, where's the second this thing? He left it downstairs. It's so, probably downstairs still. Right, well, that's okay. To, there's well, there's two different frothers there's basically. Two froth, well, no, one frosts the milk for making a cappuccino. <clears throat> one of these little inserts to the milk thing, and there's another one which isn't as well. There's another one that looks a little bit different, but it's pretty similar. That if you just want to get the milk hot for like making a latte without getting it all foamy. So in this particular case, what you do, you have to drop it in here. There's a little place to put it, 
if Dasha could bring the milk over. Yeah, and actually, you know, to me, the, the other one. I know, I know that you know, milk frothers aren't particularly expensive, but to me, the milk frother is one of the best parts about the you have uh, it espresso. Built in. Now, this isn't really loud at all. When you do it, it just kind of you can hear it. But you hit the button, and you can leave it as long as you want. And unfortunately, we've got a problem. What? This thing wasn't on. Oop, that didn't sound right. Take it off the thing. Should we hit the button? I got a disaster. I knew this, Party foul. I knew this episode was going to be a disaster. Dasha was doing the right thing. Right, where, you have those clean hands? I got milk hands now. Clean hands are back in the box. It's okay. Yeah. Now, but look, all right. I'm going to just say right off the bat, no, I've we, tasted we, we, both no, of them. We need, we need to get this. Put the, get the milk thing on here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying okay. to show you just how easy it is to make a cappuccino. If you if you just let me do it, then everything okay, runs. Okay, now it's, it's working go. fine. So now you get the sense it's not really loud at all. Um, and literally, if you you know we're doing it from the front, not trying to do it upside down and behind like I just tried to do. This thing will spin around. You can let it go for two minutes or so. You can stop it midway through. And this is actually going to make a foamy. Uh, milk because we're using the that certain piece that we inserted and you basically and, and you can do that simultaneously to make in the espresso and is this not what starbucks does when they give you your pretty much you what know, starbucks does your latte now let's be clear you're gonna foam it it's not the same as doing the hand right uh espresso like if you go to a starbucks or a real coffee shop well, in italy and i'm sure there'd be a ton of coffee snobs that'll tell us that neither one of these are good coffee and you know this is pod based coffee this is yeah, convenience if you wanna, if you more than three, anything if you want to spend three thousand dollars or more you can get you know an actual professional level machine this you're talking about two to three hundred dollars for an espresso and you can re really replicate lattes and cappuccinos this thing is cheaper and you know what? If if you like just regular Dude. long things of coffee, it's better. Honestly, though, I yeah, you, even, you didn't even taste this yet, I did you? Taste, it's taste pretty it. it. It's pretty bad compared to the Nespresso, if you ask me. It just, it's yeah, just, just no. Down. It's yeah. just yeah. It, it's no comparison in terms of the flavor and the robustness of the. Now, what the I don't. What the drink. thing for me is, given the cost, if I like this style of coffee, I would probably still just brew a pot of coffee. To be quite honest. Careful that milk there. It looks like it's about to overflow right. on us there. So, you know, <laughs> I think we might have... Yeah, I'm no, I'm with you. Like, if I wanted this, why not just go out and buy a $25 Folgers, or I don't know if Folgers make Mr. Coffee coffee pot right. and, and brew some coffee. Yeah, now you can see This here, has always been my complaint I've of the, the, the Keurig is, is watered-down coffee. And so, you know, pretty quickly you have a cappuccino. This is the frothy milk. I didn't spoon it out because well, I don't have a spoon. Um, and a lot of times you may actually want to do the milk first and pour the espresso in afterwards. But, you know, if you want to be quick, you can see there's two layers foaming, uh, forming. You have the coffee layer at the bottom that's mixing with the milk and then the foamy part there at the top. Now, let's do talk a little bit. I mean, Nespresso is very popular in Europe, right? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people have these at their homes. Nespresso in general is already a and, and that's why you you learned about it. It was because right. you lived in Europe for a while and, and that and y'all turned me on to it, actually. Right, right, yeah. I didn't feel like having to walk around the block every time I wanted the damn coffee on Sunday morning or any other day. Plus, it was a lot cheaper over time rather than spending 5 or $6 at Starbucks per coffee. You're spending a dollar, dollar twenty when you factor in milk or whatever. Right. But now, with the new capsules, it's, it's you know, under a dollar. So, it's... um. Yeah. No, if you ask me, it's no contest. If you like a lot of water, go with the Keurig. If you like milk in... In robust coffee, if you go with an espresso. If you're the person that likes to have a long cup of coffee, standard American diner coffee, pot coffee, then this is fine and it's convenient and it does, you know, do teas and some other things like that. If you want, you know, if you're the person who likes what Starbucks is doing, and again, I'm not trying to single out Starbucks because I think Starbucks is great. I'm just using that as the example. Kind for, of a standard. For that lattes we, and cappuccinos right. and things like that. Then, you know, this is your best value, I would say, short of buying a professional level that multi-thousand dollar now the only now the only other thing i'll add to that this is that when i used the keurig i felt like i had to put a lot of cream and sugar in my coffee right and one of the things i really love about switching to the nespresso is that i don't add a bunch of extra sugar at all i just add a little bit of milk and I feel like it's a healthier cup of coffee as well because yeah. I'm not putting all this other extra junk into it in order to make it taste good. Yeah, I mean, because it tastes good already. I've definitely found that if you, especially if you use full milk or whole milk, 
oh, man, delicious. It's delicious. It's really that's good. freaking delicious. If you it's... use skim, it's going to taste different, you know, and whatever. Oh, that's, man. That's, that's your preference. But if you just use whole milk, you don't really need sugar, I don't think. And and also, too, the espresso are nice and strong and have a lot of extra flavor. Right. I mean, we use the same amount of coffee in both of these, right? Yeah. And look T- which got. one do you want to drink? It's, an, it's no contest to me. Right. So, you know, there's our FWS recognition recommendation in the celebrity death match of the coffee makers the nespresso has basically pulled a uh, you know choked out the keurig um maybe for some people for certain things you want to do tea with it too there's a there's a point but really you know well, and we'll see whether or not you know now that they're saying they're going to open up the nespresso pods you know to other manufacturers maybe we will be getting tea and hot yeah, so, chocolate so you, and you all these other before things with your drm Basically, it's funny they're going in opposite directions. They Nespresso do. was secretly guarding its patent and saying no one can make pods except Nespresso, and Keurig was actually pretty open about it. The French government effectively forced Nespresso to open up with the who makes the pods. So you might see Starbucks making its own Nespresso pods pretty soon. I do hate the fact that they're both, or they, you know, Nespresso obviously was trying to do this until the French government stood in the way, and and now we see Keurig. They're all trying to corner their market. They're all yeah, trying but, to say, you, know, <clears throat> you have to use our capsules. That really drives me crazy. But, th- but that's what that's what printers did. I mean, basically, these are just printers, right? I mean, printers back in the day, if you bought an Epson or you bought a Canon, you could only use the Canon or the Epson one within, right. in their cartridges. And these are effectively cartridges, right? Now, eventually, patents ran out. People started making... Ver- so it's the, same, it's the same thing that happens. I think the celebrity death match has been decided. Well, you know, we're clearly biased, but, you know, it, to each his own... Water versus milk, you be the judge. 